what's it like culturally in terms of how people view Bitcoin um, in Kenya as well as in Nigeria? Because I know Nigeria has tried to do this central bank digital currency, yeah. uh, and it's I think a lot of people have considered it a failure. And I you know and I've heard reasons why they think it failed. Um, how do you view? We can get into that in a second, but first start off with Kenya and how they think about Bitcoin. What's it like there? How do they think about uh, digital payments in general? Is it more cash based uh, society? Is it more digital? Just talk some about how money works in, in your country and in broadly in Africa. Okay, so maybe for Kenya, maybe I can just get into Kenya because um, I, I keep on saying Kenya was a special case because um, I don't know whether you've heard of M-Pesa. Maybe I can just explain it to your viewers. Um, in Kenya, uh, we personally just uh, make payments through mobile payments. M-Pesa is a platform that was developed to enable this. So for us, payment using mobile phone is not a new, it's not a new it's not a. It's not something new. It's something that uh, we've we've lived with it for for quite some time, and um, how people view Bitcoin uh, when it came into the country first, it came with lots of cryptocurrency scams, unfortunately, and uh, people viewed it as a scam as because of the volatility. There were lots of uh, people being promised returns and uh, which was never fulfilled, and as a result of this. There's a lot of skepticism in the industry, and uh, but with time, I believe, especially for the younger population, um, we have a we have a very vast network of like online writers, and uh, PayPal is really frustrating in terms of payments here, and uh, people will always look for an avenue. I, I guess it's just the same case with, uh, with with Nigeria, and lots of fintech came in came into the picture to facilitate that but with fintechs we have banks which of course make the process still really cumbersome and um cryptocurrency really did is is quite known especially among the the youth uh when it's bitcoin specifically i i, I think we still have a lot to do in terms of that because people need to understand why not all these other cryptocurrencies and why bitcoin there's still a lot to be done in between and uh there's also lots of cryptocurrency um owners who come to kenya to shield their cryptos so yeah we have a long way when it comes to bitcoin but i believe people are aware of Bitcoin. It's it's really not an, a new factor here. Yeah, it's not a new discussion. So um, going into, into Nigeria instead, um, I think the perception with Nigeria, it was still the same. Um, but for Nigeria, the circumstances are quite different. They do not have a Nobel payment system like we do, um, the M-Pesa. So with, with Nigeria, um, on the onset of the pandemic, for example, lots of banks closed down. And with the closure of the banks, um, because the, the Nigeria system is more of a cash system, there wasn't really easy accessibility of cash. And uh, most people, especially in the rural areas, <clears throat> didn't have access to, to, to the banks. And uh, so onset of pandemic, uh, clo closure of banks, uh, less accessibility than... Um, people will look for avenues. The, the youth especially will look for avenues and um cryptocurrency of course was, was was among the first because the remittance there as i've talked there's lots of brain drain people need to send money back home to their families and uh with that cryptocurrency became a boom i think mostly especially during the pandemic and then the central bank of nigeria noticed this so come february 2021 they banned they banned actually um commercial banks from engaging in cryptocurrency. So as compared to, to us, where we had M-Pesa, and for us having M-Pesa, it was easy for exchanges like Binance to come into the industry. Uh, because with Binance, you can always just sell and receive money directly to your M-Pesa. So that gap is already closed. And uh, it's easier for cryptocurrency to move around in Kenya, I think, as compared to to Nigeria, where you had to like maybe access the commercial bank in order to buy or that, and so with with the with the bar, barring of commercial banks, they that came now the option of peer to peer trading, and now we find um, exchanges like Pax, Paxful and Local Bitcoin. Um, so an opportunity in that, and uh, I think Paxful is quite huge in Nigeria, and um, uh, in terms of purchasing of Bitcoin, and uh, so. After it was it was it was it was bad. Commercial banks were bad. 
comes October 2020, 2021. Of course, the reason they gave for this was, you know, um, the, the usual fraud and terrorism. Um, comes, right. yeah, October 2021, then the government decided, you know what, we're launching our own e-Naira. So they launched the e-Naira and they gave a reason that they were enhancing financial inclusivity. Mind you, this time, um, and they want to, you know, move the society towards a digital digital society, um, since most remittances are now digital. But with that, there's also the system, the electronic system, um, Nigerian system called NIBS that was already underway. So I we fail to understand why they why they decided that. But um, another thing, maybe I should mention on the e-Naira, when the e-Naira was launched. Um, they used a blockchain technology um, that was already that had already launched another another crypto another digital currency in the Eastern Caribbean using the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. It was called Dcash, and the Dcash had already failed in the Caribbean. And um, maybe someone in the Central Bank of Nigeria didn't do the due diligence to to realize that there was no hope of this blockchain ever working. And uh, I think the Dikash has, had left people in a limbo. It had closed down for around two weeks. So with two weeks, people wow. couldn't access their cash. And this is information that was already out there even before the the recent, um, even as, even right now as Ilmera is still in yeah in progress. And so after that, after the bearing of of of, uh, of the, after the launch of, launch of the e Naira. Um, comes now around um, November, November 2022. Uh, the government of Nigeria decided they want to redesign the the Naira. So they had introduced the e Naira, but still notes were in use, and they said they wanted to redesign the 200 Naira notes, the the 500 Naira notes, and the 1000 Naira notes into new notes, um, the usual, just to curb inflation. That um, that was rising because inflation in Nigeria at around twenty one percent as per now, and wow. uh, with that, yeah, it's 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 bad. The and um, yeah, so redesigning of the notes come December. Uh, redesigning of the notes come December, since there was not much uptake of the e naira. Around fifty percent of the adult population were against the e naira. And uh, besides that, there was also, uh, we have talked about the energy crisis, the electricity reach. People couldn't uptake it. So they decided in December to limit cash withdrawals from bank to around $667 uh, per, per, per person. Um, it was per person, or per, yeah, per person in, in yeah. a week. And uh, with this, oh, yeah, there was a lot of chaos in the country, of course, because uh, people are now scrambling to get the new the new naira, and uh, it it was a, it was a mess. We saw protests break out. The, there were bonfires. There were people even sleeping at the banks, um, waiting to withdraw withdraw cash. Then um, in January, they decided to like increase the limits, and uh, instead of foregoing of foregoing the whole. The whole, all the old notes they decided they will keep the lower denominations and um, people can now do a cash swap program where they would take the 200 naira notes, the 500 naira notes and the 1000 naira notes and change them um, for the either the old lower denomination notes. But also with that, they still kept, kept the cap of 10,000 naira. Um, so this was also still to as a form of bribing people or manipulating people towards using the e naira instead and um of course with that also lots of chaos now that was uh, that was what um caused the chaos that we saw and all of this is happening while there's an election uh incoming election yeah. yeah this was the election they were having was in february and um maybe to say just this was the first election actually in nigeria where um, there was and there was no there was no military military leader and uh, no incumbent also running and so there were major elections and of course the youth felt different disenfranchised they were hoping for change and um, this is when now we saw most of the chaos happening the protest and um, fast forward um, 
in April, the president decided that uh, no, so no, the president decided that they were going to push forward the the day in which the currencies will be taken off completely from the markets and. He pushed it to April, but the Supreme Court uh, made a ruling that it will happen in December 2023 instead. So the situation in Nigeria, we're still, maybe you can say it's a work in progress in terms of the currency, how we're looking at it and how it will progress. So yeah, waiting, I'm also curious to see how that goes.